about unity and strength. We approach this day as a time to serve our neighbors in need, with you and with each other. May the spirit of prayer not only begin our work, but sustain it and conclude it as well. Prayer and reflection begin this day and every day at St. Vincent de Paul Cincinnati's Ozenham Center for Service Learning. It's part of a week of activities that introduce these young people to their neighbors struggling in poverty. As we meet high school students Anaga de Zoysa and Olivia Shamleffer, they're just beginning this eye-opening immersion experience, having visited with citizens returning from incarceration, interactions that already have them reflecting on their Catholic faith. In Matthew 25, Jesus mentions closing the naked, feeding the hungry, visiting those who are in prison. And being on an immersion retreat is really nice because we get to do all those things on a deeper level. And when we come back to chapel, we can kind of take time to reflect on everything we've gone through, everything that we, has happened during the day. It's, it's a time to process and reflect on the choices we've made and how what we've done has affected the lives of the people who are in need. I don't think you can judge anyone. I think that's a lot of what we're learning and that it also connects us to our faith a lot because it truly is what we should do as Catholics is know that we're all equal before God. A lot of the students that come through, they have grown up in Cincinnati and they've seen the city from one perspective and the goal is really to take them around for the week and show them that there's a bit more to the city and there's another perspective to look at. Program coordinator Megan Kanapke sees perceptions change over the week while empathy increases as students find new ways to live their Catholic faith. Stuart Shumrick, a previous attendee, was moved by his week-long service learning experience and says he's seen firsthand it's not easy for people struggling in poverty. Oh God, no. I think some of those people are just struggling so hard. You know, I look at them, I think the struggles they must go through every day, I just I never really thought about it until I hear what they talk about. Delaney Munchen says a home visit changed her life. Even today, she remembers every detail vividly. I walked into this man's apartment and he had absolutely nothing besides a popped air mattress on the ground. And he had, um, I think, three spoons, two knives, a fork, a pot, a pan, an empty fridge, and I think like three plates and a cup. And like, I just remember like walking in and being just shocked, um, like how he was living and how he was still the, like one of the nicest people I've ever met and just so caring. Delaney prayed with him and was moved by his spirit of generosity. He was so grateful and he started crying. Like a, a grown man was just like crying. And um, he gave me this big hug and it was like really important to me. The home visit is a hallmark of the society, as Vincentians go in pairs to meet with people in their homes. Janita Williams welcomed us into her home and allowed us to share these intimate conversations as a wave of emotions fell over Anaga and Olivia, too. Words can't describe and how they help families, any family that, that needs help. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's incredible, it's amazing. She was just so genuine and the, the amount of thankful, the amount of gratitude she expressed to all of us, it was just like amazing. Her, her reaction was so intense, like the, her gratitude and how thankful she was just for everything we did. I'll take the home visit any day, hands down to the uh, office interview. You're going to their place where they, what they call home, you get to see the conditions for yourself. I was really surprised about just how much it, uh, it affected you. Um, obviously, meeting the people in their homes, and that means something, but it's crazy. It just makes it so much more personal. The Spirit's been moving, and everybody um, has joined into this relationship throughout the home visit, and it's, it's normally just a short visit. You know, it's maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, but there's something special that happens in that time and um, to be able to pray together at the end and to have our neighbor be able to lead that is something that always is special. Previous attendees share similar memories of their home visits. Their fridge was almost empty. They had nothing. I've never seen 
um, just a type of just how bare, like a bare of a situation he was living in. Um, so I walked in the apartment and the first thing the father and all the kids did was they ran up to me and gave me a huge hug and he grabbed what little he had out of his fridge and offered to make us breakfast. And when he said that, I was, I started, tears were welling out of my eyes. Kate Sampson's experiences opened her eyes to a new reality. I'd met so many amazing people with amazing stories. It really humbled me and showed me that these people are people just like me. Uh, they didn't do anything wrong to be here. Um, I very well could be in a situation like they could be in. Um, it was very humbling and taught me really to look at people like the people they are. Immersion organizers say visiting low-income neighborhoods helps break down barriers, allowing the students to more fully understand the journey someone else is on while helping attendees like Abby Smith come out of their own comfort zones. It's not like you're serving down to them. It's not like a you don't pity them, they're not below you. You're at the same level as them and you're connecting through your service as though you're all just on an even playing field as like children of God.